Unless you heard me sing before. Yeah. Well, good morning. Good How are we doing? Good morning. Apparently, we're going to have a bit of a, a heat wave in the next few days. Summer is here. Is the kids are back at school. It's great, it's great. Welcome to City Church. We've got some friends, some guests here this morning. It's really, really great to see you this morning. I want to ask you a question this morning. Well, a few questions. What do you think about it? How's your hands? Just have a look at your hands this morning. They look gorgeous. They look gorgeous, do they? I'm going to speak a little bit later on on what's in your hand. But I was thinking about it. We started our prayer meeting this morning at 9.30 just in front of the kitchen. Uh, every Sunday morning I was going to be doing this. So. Uh, please come along and join us, even if you just arrived at quarter from ten, we'd love to see you. And um, thinking about our hands this morning, thinking, uh, I've not got the big hands, anybody got big hands? No. No, how big should your hands are big, look, aren't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I was thinking about our hands this morning, I wonder what we use our hands for. You know, we can use them this morning to bless. We use them this morning to, to clap our hands before God. We can use them to... Praise to God in surrender. We can use our hands for so many things this morning, can't we? Just to bless God. And I wonder this morning, why don't you just turn around? I know we, with COVID, we're supposed to keep our one meter distance and all sorts of stuff and still try to, uh, certain regulations are still kind of there to help us. Um, but I wonder this morning, we just want to wave at somebody across the way. It's good to see you. You can smile if you want to smile. It's great, isn't it? Come on, let's stand to our feet. Come on, let's use these hands this morning. We just lift them up in the presence of God this morning. You know, we've prayed already that the presence of God would just fall in this place. We prayed over you this morning as you were arriving. And from our youngest to our oldest, we just want the presence of God. We? we just want our children to be saturated in the presence of God, our young people. Even us oldies, we still want to have the presence of God over our lives. Come on, lift your hands in the presence of God. Why don't you begin to pray now? Why don't you welcome the Holy Spirit in this place? Welcome the Holy Spirit in this place this morning. Holy Spirit, fall in this place. Father, we're going to use our hands this morning to bless you, to honor you, to lift our hands and surrender, to clap praises to you because you deserve the highest praises. To bless you in your house this morning, God. To bless you in your house this morning, God. And so, Father, as we prayed already in our prayer meeting, God, we just pray, Holy Spirit, fall. Holy Spirit, be our lead. Be our guide. Be the service leader, God, I pray this morning. That everything we say and everything we do will bring glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, let's use our hands to clap God this morning. Let's just bless him in this place.
in 1 Corinthians 13 that talks about the action and the behavior of Jesus. And here's the action, love word, described in 1 Corinthians 13. It says that love is patient. The action of God, His character, is patient, it's kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It's not rude nor self-seeking, not easily angered, keeps the record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love protects, love trusts, love hopes, love perseveres, love never fails. That's the action love of our God. Love never fails. You know, as we were just singing this over and over and over again, it really touched my heart when the worship team stopped singing but the music went on and I felt the church at that particular time became a choir and I could hear the songs that were coming up behind me and it really did my heart good. But then I just began to think about love never fails, love never fails and I began to think about my own life and think sometimes I felt you're very good at starting some things, sometimes you're not very good at finishing some things. And if we're all honest, we're probably a little bit like that. We're, we're good at starting stuff, but bringing stuff to completion or bringing stuff to the end, maybe we're not so good at. And maybe you're a really good starter. Maybe you've started out well in your Christian walk. Or maybe you've started something, a Bible plan, or whatever that might be. Or maybe you've said, God, I'm going to do this. And you've started it, but you're not quite there. Let's pull on the action word of God. Because what God starts, He finishes. Is that not true? Yeah. It's Philippians 1.6, not say, He that began a good work in you is faithful to bring it to completion. Mm -hmm. yeah. He never fails. And you may feel this morning that you're a failure. But not completing one task doesn't make you a failure. It just means you've not completed it. And maybe this morning there's one or two in this place that maybe class yourself or look at yourself as a failure. Then I want to remove that ungodly truth this morning because that is not true. Let's just bow our heads for a moment, close our eyes for a moment. I don't wish to embarrass anybody. And maybe this morning you, you've spoken those kind of words over your own life. Maybe you're a failure, you'll never amount to much. Then I want you just between you and God right now is to ask for God's forgiveness for those words you've spoken over your own life. As sons and daughters of the Most High God, we have the right to speak all truths over our own lives. Because we've been bought with too great a price. And you need to speak truth over your life right now. You are not a failure. Not a failure. And he who began a good work in you is faithful to bring it to completion. And the work started when you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ at the cross. In fact, for many of us, it started before then. He was already talking to us and speaking to us. The Holy Spirit was convincing us and convicting us of our sin. But that relationship started at the cross. And he started this incredible journey with you. He gave you a hope and a future. So get rid of that word failure right now. Just get rid of it. Ask God to forgive you for the words that you've used. And say, God, I'm the head, I'm not the tail. That you are for me, then who can be against me? There's nothing can separate me from the love of God. Nothing. This love of God that we've been singing about is where nothing, nor height, nor depth, nor width. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. Nothing. And so, Father, I pray as people across this place are just surrendering those words of all truth. 
that we replace it with the truth of the Word of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I keep coming back to this little phrase, and we mentioned it Tuesday night at our Bible study. And uh, I mentioned this a few months ago when we began to look at the mind and praying through that and looking through that. Don't buy a lie. Don't buy a lie. The enemy will want to sell you lies after lies after lies after lies because he's the father of lies. There's no truth in him whatsoever. So don't buy into it. You are not a failure. You will never be a failure. Yeah, there's some things we don't complete, some things that, that maybe don't work out. But I've learned over the years that if something doesn't work out the way I plan, I've learned how not to do it. Not that I failed, I've learned how not to do it. We need to turn those things around and look at them with, with God eyes, with the things that God is doing in us and through us. Anyway, um, where are you going, Faith? Come this way. Um, if you weren't with us last week, uh, we made an announcement, Faith has taken over our children's work. And uh, I just asked for just a few minutes this morning just to give a quick overview on this uh, just before we release our children this morning. But we also want to pray for our children, our teachers, those people that are involved in education. We want to take a moment to pray over you guys because you're all back to school and everything's getting back to some kind of normal. So we want to take some time in our service to, to pray for uh, you guys this morning. Thanks. I didn't realise I was doing it now, but okay. <laughs> right. Oh, is it gone? There we go. Um, so those of you that here last week would have heard this whole spiel, so you get to hear it again. Right. Um, yeah, this is our new logo. Um, from today, we are now known as 412 Kids. Now, kind of unpack that as the PowerPoint moves forward. <laughs> we'll move forward. environment with the little ones, the little cute ones. Um, I am a teaching assistant with more kind of teacher roles every now and then, so I do kind of teach and cover. Um, I do start my teacher training finally next September, it's been a long time coming but I can't wait to get it started. Um, I've completed lots and lots of training uh, with the essential knowledge such as safeguarding, first aid, behaviour management, um, working with children with additional needs, prevent training, attachment, all those kind of different areas. Um, yeah, covered with young children and um, completed my latest safeguarding training yesterday. No, Friday, it wasn't it yesterday, Friday. Um, so Helen and myself will be delivering um, up to date safeguarding training hopefully sometime in October. Um, so if you have, if you went to the safeguarding course that we did a few, two years ago, I think maybe, um, that will be for you also. It won't just be for the children's team upstairs. Um, my heart, I have a strong passion for working with children and hopefully you get that now. Um, it is a privilege and an honour to be using my skills for the glory of God, and I long to see our children living out their lives completely sold out for Jesus. I love to see children develop, not only academically, but spiritually also. 1 Timothy 4.12 Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith and purity. Um, and like I said last week, I spent a lot of time praying and mulling over what to call our children's work upstairs, and this is the verse that really, really stood out to me. You know, I was really at peace about this verse, and yeah, like I said here, we want our children to live out and love, be strong in their faith and purity. God has no age limit. He uses anyone who is willing. We want our children to be bold, to be strong, and to be courageous. We want our children to stand firm in their faith and set an example for their friends, for their communities around them. We want our children to grasp a childlike faith, ask no questions, just believe. Everything you do, you do it for the glory of God, and that's what us as a team we will be doing upstairs and taking upstairs with us. God loves it when his children are walking in the truth. And I've had kind of some communication with the team this week, and we are all super, super excited for the next year ahead and everything that God is going to bring into that. Mission statement. To give children strong biblical foundations 
to enable them to grow in their spiritual journeys and go forth into the world spreading the good news. But short and down, we're going to go give, grow and go. Um, give. As volunteers, as I have said before, we're going to give a lot of time, a lot of prayer, um, yeah, towards the plans, towards the children. We want our children to have the very, very best. Um, as I said before, God has no age limit. We will not be putting an age limit. You know, what God can do get down here, he will use the young children to do upstairs. Mm. We are very, very confident in that. Mm -hmm. um, grow. We long for your child, children, to grow in their relationship with God. And we will be providing opportunities for them to reflect to the teaching and respond to that teaching. <laughs> Um, yeah, and with that teaching, we want them to go into the world and spread the truth. Mm -hmm. um, the vision. Yeah, still can't read it from the back. We want our children to live in confidence and love Jesus with all of their hearts. We want them to step up and step out into their communities, demonstrating how to live a godly life, showing love to others, and living out in faith. God does not place an age limit on who he uses, so neither do we. We are expecting big things for the years ahead in 412 Kids. We see potential in our children and pray that God uses them to make an impact to those around them. And as I said last week, Helen and I covered during August and the children are just so excited to be up there and they want to be fed and they want to worship and they want to learn. So hopefully it will be a nice and easy year. <laughs> um, exciting times ahead um, outlined for the following year. We're going to have lots of fellowship and games and um, like I said before, opportunities to reflect and to respond to the teaching. Um, special guest Sundays, I've already contacted a few of you, and a few of you out there I'll still be contacting. Um, parties, lots of parties, have a good party, blues and games, messy play, we've got lots of messy crafts up there this morning. Um, one of the topics we will be covering is love. Where's the next one gone? Oh, Armour of God, we're starting that series today, so it's going to be a seven week series. Um, and on the seventh week we will all come down on our armour that we have made, and hopefully it stays. Um, goodness of God, uh, weekly challenge sheets, like I said, it's the teacher and me, I love to give a bit of homework, but it will be fun, it won't be like school homework. Um, Bible heroes, faithfulness, um, another passion of mine, worship, um, I will be taking that upstairs, we'll be having time to worship, to dance, um, have a bit of teaching on worship as well. Craft mornings, outings, hopefully the farm. Kind of my benefit idea of going to the farm. Um, dance, lots of dance. Um, the best is yet to come. Um, if you haven't been up there, I know a few of you went up there last week, feel free after the service to have a look. We've given it a paint, we've given it a freshen up, we've got some new stools in there. Um, it'll just be a really nice, calm, fun space for all the children to learn. We're going to get new furniture, new resources, children's team t shirts I'm super excited about. I'll have a look into. Um, points, prizes and presentation warning. Children, if you're listening, this is kind of for you. So every week the children can earn up to four points. Um, and next September we will be having a presentation warning where the team and myself will add up all of the points that they have collected over the year. And then they will receive prizes, medals, certificates, um, gifts, and just to kind of honour them as well. Because they will have to be put in, hopefully, a lot of work, you know, learning lots, listening lots. Um, yeah, so that, so that, I'm ahead of the game. Um, volunteers, um, if you feel it's an area that God has taken you to, please come and speak to me. I will support you. We will put on training sessions um, so you can kind of grasp more of my heart. I could talk forever, but I'm not allowed. Um, so please come and speak to me and I can share a little bit more with you. Um, with this in mind, we will be running training sessions, like I've said, so safeguarding needs to be an annual thing. Um, supporting children's behaviour, working with children with additional needs, and kind of adult behaviour and kind of how we should be up there with the children. Yeah, and to finish, um, sorry, this is last week's PowerPoint, I haven't updated it. But anyway, from today, the children will be taken upstairs at quarter to 11, so now. Um, if the parents, if you can take your children up when I have finished um, and then collect them at quarter to 12 at the end of the day, session. Um, please be mindful that our volunteers cannot leave until every child has left because um, we don't want the children to be running down the stairs and running around so you don't know where they are and it could just be a huge mess. So please, please support us and remember um, to do that. Also, I do have forms for you parents and carers out there. I think I've had a few back um, but if you haven't got one, please come and speak to me. I do have lots and lots that I've printed off, ready for all the children to come flooding in. Yeah, that's it really. 
Sorry it was a bit quick, but please come and speak to me if you do have questions. It's very exciting, isn't it? It's great. We want our kids to have the best, as I mentioned last week. So uh, we're still in the process of that, still buying some new furniture and various things up there. A little bit of paint to be finished. We hope to put a new carpet in there too. Uh, that's the kind of plans. Uh, we'll, we'll get that as we go through the weeks. Okay, we just want to take a moment for our children released upstairs. So if you're at school, uh, children, can you stand to your feet? If we have teachers, if you're involved in education in any way, can you please stand to your feet? We just want to take a moment. Don't escape on me yet, Ruth. Uh, so come on, stand to your feet. If you're in education in some way, I need you to stand to your feet for me. Don't make me come down there. <laughs> come on, children, stand up to your feet. You're in education in some way, if you're a teacher, you help in school, you're a dinner lady, whatever that may be. If you're in education, we want to take a moment uh, just to pray over you. Or if you're in college or university, if you come back again. There you go, there you go, there you go. Now there you go. There we go. Okay, we want to take a moment to pray. So if there's some children, there's some people standing around you, just... Put your hands their direction. Helen's just going to come and pray, though Helen's a teacher as well. I don't know why people want to be teachers, they want to work involved. Uh, but they do an amazing, amazing job. And uh, certainly light within a place within their school environment. So please, uh, thank you, Helen. Okay, just for um, I pray, I just want you just to come, just to think about um, the way that education is morally and ethically challenged. Um, the teachings that we have come from our government, from Parliament, and a lot. We're, we're definitely living in challenging times. We always, we always are because it's ever evolving, but it is more challenging than ever. Um, and I really think, I don't see it as a problem, I see it as an opportunity for the workers, the adults, to make a difference, you've got an opportunity to make a big change, um, to stand um, for what is right on biblical grounds. It is difficult, but we can make a change. Um, we are walking Bibles in the sense that who we are, how we live our lives, the choices and decisions that we make, the way that we respond to situations when we're challenged, all reflects who God wants us to be. And we are that, rep that representation of um, of having fellowship with Jesus, of, of we are who He wants us to be. We are a reflection of Him. Um, so, young people, I know that you're challenged. I know what you have to face. I know what you're taught. Sometimes it's not at all in line with what we believe is true. Um, but that's not a problem. It's an opportunity. Um, it's a challenge. It's an opportunity. So, Father God, I just pray right now, Lord, for everybody who is involved in education, Lord, whether it's teachers, dinner ladies, um, assistants, Father, um, the children from the youngest to the oldest at colleges and at universities, Father, for parents mm -hmm. who are supporting in these situations, for families who are teaching their children the right ways and sometimes battling against what's coming through education, Father. We pray for your favour. We pray for your divine intervention, Father. We pray yeah. for your wisdom. Yeah. Lord, we pray for your strength, Father. Yeah. We pray for your love to just abound, just to flourish and to overflow out to this Lord that we would act and speak with grace Father that we would speak with love Father we just pray that this would be a year of fruit for our young people Father that even with everything that's happening in the church with the growth in, in our ministries from youth to children Father that it's a year of the Lord's favour Father and, and, and we're, we, we are an army Father and we go forward together Lord and we're here to support each other Father with our young people and the challenges that they're faced but above all, Lord, you are King, you are Lord, you are Saviour, you walk hand in hand, you guide our young people, you guide our workers in the right way to go, Father. I pray that they would make a difference um, in the places that they go to, in the friendships that they have, that, that they wouldn't be scared and steer away from the challenge, Father, that they would see it as an opportunity 
um, just to be who you want them to be, Father, that they would listen closely to what you are saying to them, that they would speak um, truth into people's lives, that the truth that they speak will, will set captives free. Father, we pray that lives will be changed in the workplaces, that people will be drawn to them because of the Spirit of God within them and flowing through them and out of them, Father God. So above all, we give you glory and praise and thanks and honour, Father, for the places that you position us in, Father, for the schools and colleges and universities that our young people are part of, that are influencing, for our staff, Father, the people who work for the positions and places that you put them in, pour your favour down upon them, Father, that it would change a generation to the glory of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So let's release our children and our young people. Have a great morning. It's great to see so many children and young people as well. For the rest of us, you're stuck with me. No. So I'm like, woo, do I hear someone? Okay. <laughs> okay, let me give a few announcements, a few videos that we're going to watch this morning. Just a short couple of minute videos to give you updates on the various things uh, that we have that we're starting. I always see, over the 20 odd years of doing this job now, I always see um, September as an opportunity to relaunch. We would have received an email from myself on Friday or read it on our church Facebook about a relaunch and a restart and certainly for me as a pastor and um, I've seen it as an opportunity to, to reset some things uh, within within our own fellowship here and um, probably a little bit quicker than probably uh, probably want to do it but lockdown has kind of helped some of those things and um, lockdown for us was never lockdown. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it didn't surprise God whatsoever. We didn't like lockdown. We didn't like being in our own home. In fact, for me, I, I did kind of like being at home because I love being at home. But in one sense, where we were certainly restricted in all the things that we were allowed to do. But lockdown was never locked down for the church. Please talk to me. It was never locked down for the church. God is always moving. Because there's a pandemic doesn't mean God stops working. He's always doing things, always preparing things, always changing things always up to some things and um, the church never closed its doors in the sense of a spiritual sense just maybe physically but spiritually it didn't in fact more people watch church online than they did that ever ever attended church and the word prayer was googled more times more than anything else than it has been probably over the generations and so just because it was locked lockdown doesn't mean that we had lockdown okay so i really believe that, that god is, is is changing us we prayed this morning uh, you know that there was there was there was a new season. I believe it's a new season for us as a church. Um, we're moving forward into the, some of the things that God has for us. We continue to um, clean the church through our connect groups. Um, we have a, a team meeting this week that we're going to relook at this and see how we can do this better. Um, again, if you can help us in some way, then please do talk to us. Uh, we'll do what we can. Some events coming up: a prayer meeting every Sunday morning now, 9:30, just in front of the kitchen. Come along, join us in there. Already, it was a bit packed in there this morning. We'll have to find another place to pray. Maybe we'll have to plan pray on the street. <laughs> if it's not raining, we'll bring umbrellas, and we'll find somewhere else. But please come along and pray because nothing happens without prayer, and it certainly, certainly prepares our hearts and lives for coming in and um, coming in as we pray over the service. Um, Colossians, um, is that clip ready to go? We start Tuesday night, we start a new Bible study on Colossians. It's taught by a guy called Louis Giglow. There's a, there's a short video, but it's a lot of discussion that we've been having over the last few weeks. It'll be a discussion type Bible study. So here's just a couple of minutes uh, of that video. Thanks, guys. We have to dive into what many people believe is one of the most important letters ever written in the history of the world. It was a letter from Paul, one of the great leaders of the early church, to the believers in Christ in this New Testament city called Colossae. 
We want our lives to be tethered to this unchanging truth. But it's not just about information on the page. It's about a relationship with the God of the pages. And we're going to see an amazing theological truth. But we're also going to see a powerful life lesson that flows right out of the gospel story of Jesus. Something that's going to impact the way that you and I live right where we are. The gospel, the gospel isn't, isn't simply, simply a private thing. The, the gospel was intended to work its way out, out of every part of our lives, lives. Not, not only to change, change us, but to show the supremacy and to show the sufficiency of Jesus. Jesus. Christ, Christ isn't just, just an eternal, eternal check mark for, for us. us. He's, He's the, the very source of our life. life. And it says when Christ, Christ who is our life, life appears, appears, we're going to appear with him in glory. We gotta start, start our days with a new perspective. perspective. And it and is, I've, I've got, got all I need in Christ to do, to do everything that God, God wants me to be. be. I have I the fullness of God, God in Christ in me. In me. Hey, that looks good, doesn't it? I, I love the book of Colossians. It's so Christological with the stuff that Paul brings out. And um, so come along, notes will be given out. He does a teaching for eight or ten minutes, but then we have um, uh, some forms that will give you out, some notes, and we'll have discussions, we'll have some tea and coffee, obviously, but come along, it's an eight-week session, and we'll just have some teaching together. So that starts this Tuesday night, 7.30, and the plan is to finish at nine o'clock. I mentioned the well-being course um, for you to sign up for. Again, I just have a couple of minutes, about a one and a half minute um, video clip. Um, it, it's, it is on our, our website page. Please have a look at it. We're just going to quickly show it now. So you have an understanding of what that is. It starts uh, the last Monday night of September, which I think is the 27th. Again, 7.30 through to 9 o'clock. And uh, we, we'd love you to sign up. There's a form on the welcome team desk out there for you to sign up for that. It just helps us so we have enough notes and various things for you. Um, but please, again, Joe, please put this off for me. Thank you.
want you to sign up for this. You can come along to a 12 week course uh, starting on the Monday. Um, and even if you want to come along the first evening and just check it out and see what it is, uh, there will be some discussion, there will be some teaching, there will be some video clips. Um, you can want to come along on the first Monday night to see what it is to see if it's for you. Uh, what I've learned over the years is um, we all carry some sort of baggage, we've all picked up some kind of hurt, we've all been damaged in some sort of way and we're on this lifelong process of becoming like Jesus and on that process um, God heals us up and this is part of the plan and uh, that God will heal us up and this course will really help. So um, again, check it out a little bit, sign up, the form is on the welcome desk uh, for you to come along and just sign up for those things. Okay, church membership, we've had lots of new people join us um, during lockdown and we've come out of lockdown. There's some forms up on the welcome desk as well to fill those in, uh, fill those in and then pass them back to myself. There will be a class obviously uh, to bring you into membership. You'll get a, you'll get a booklet to explain who we are, what we do, why we do it, the church set up. Um, but you need to go through that and then officially we'll bring you in uh, on a Sunday morning. As a charity, by law, we need members. That's, that's the way charity law works. And so we want you to be part of it, not just to be part of our house. We want you to get involved. Uh, we do believe in body ministry and lots of people get involved. And uh, so we want you to play a part in that. But we need you to go through this membership course. So please um, fill the form and give it back to myself. Come along to the class, ask as many questions as you want to. And then you can decide whether you want to uh, sign up or not. But the forms are there. Water baptism, there's some water baptism forms uh, on the welcome desk also today. If you've not been baptized in water, full immersed, uh, then please fill those forms in. Give them back to myself, and again, we'll have a class. We'll take these uh, top off here, we'll fill up this tank. It will be warm water. We're not very, uh, we are very nice to you. It'll be nice and warm water, and we'll baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, I think that's everything. Okay, if you've got your Bibles, your iPads, or your phones, go with me to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. We're going to continue looking at um, David and Goliath. And I've shared with some people this morning, uh, eventually when Goliath dies, sorry to spoil the story for you, then we will move into something else that God has for us. So moving into that, there's a few things that I'm praying about and looking at where to kind of go next. Um, but certainly we will um, get to the place where Goliath will lose his head uh, in the next few weeks. But this morning I just want to look at one particular verse. And if you're right at the start of the service with us, I got us just to look at our hands. And the importance of our hands, the importance that, that God uses stuff that, that he's got in our hands. And so the title of my message this morning um, is this. What's in your hand? What has God placed in your hand that he can use? Our talents, our gifts, lots of things that God has placed into our hands and into our lives that God wants to use. So uh, we mentioned this morning our children. We'd love more children's workers and helpers. We mentioned our young people. We certainly need more young uh, people to help with our young people. Of course, you've got to go through the various checks and things that are put in place. We need lots of different people in different places. We'd love more musicians. We'd learn, love more cleaners. We'd love lots of different things. Even ministries that aren't up and going yet, we still need people who would be prepared to be involved in those things. And so when you come through the membership course, for those who have done, there's a form in there to fill. Is there some practical gifts that you have that you can help in the church? And is there some spiritual gifts that you have that you can help within the church? Because we truly believe we don't want you to be part of a church. We just come along and sit every Sunday. We do believe in body ministry. We do believe and get you involved. That God has given you a gift and a talent to use for his glory. And part of that is obviously through the church. So 1 Samuel 17, and let's look at verse 40. We're going to look at one verse this morning. My plan was to go through this in one week, but we're now on week six, and we've not even got to the fight yet. And verse 40, I'm just going to concentrate on this this morning. Then he, David, took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with the sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. We get to the edge of the battle. We're getting very close now where the battle is going to take place. And as I begin to think about this, I, I start my sermon on a Monday. Um, well, I started Tuesday. Was my holiday last Monday? Yes. So I started on Tuesday. So I like to start it straight away because I like to think about it, ponder about it, I like to meditate on it. I like to let God just work it through a little bit and sleep on it for a few days. I just like to get as much out of it as I possibly can. We've looked at the last few weeks, David was not prepared to wear another man's armor or use another man's weapons. 
he was going to use what God skilled him in. Now this is very important. We mentioned this a few weeks ago. You have to use the, the gifts and the talents God has given you. Don't work outside of the giftings and the talents that God has given you. He's given them for a particular reason. So if God has called you um, to, to work in a particular area, then don't step out of that area to do something else unless he tells you to. Work with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength and the gifts and talents that God has given you in that particular area. And as we mentioned this morning, as Helen was praying about our teachers, you're in that place. It's very challenging as a time, not just as a teacher, but as a Christian in our own society, in our own country, in the laws that they bring in. It's very difficult today sometimes to be a Christian in all of those things. But we don't see it as an opportunity to get down and get depressed. We see it as an opportunity for the glory of God. Because God's plans are always greater. And so we want to pull on those plans. So David was going to use what was placed into his hands. And so as we begin to look at the things that were placed into David's hands, I pray that the Holy Spirit this morning will just awaken you to the gifts and the talents and everything he's given you, what he's placed into your hands. So as we begin to, to break down uh, the things that, that God has already uh, given us, sorry, let me just pause here for a second. What God has given you already, you have enough to fulfill the destiny that He has given you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There's nothing more that you need. The book of Acts says, in Him we live and move and have our being. In that video clip we showed about Colossians, you are, He mentioned that you are in Christ. That means everything that Christ possesses you already own. True? You already have it all. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. You already have all those things already to fulfill the destiny and the calling that's upon your life. And so maybe this morning, maybe the prayer slightly changed, that God, would you awaken us to already what you've placed in our hands? Would you show us, God, already what's in our hands, that we're not looking to take from somebody else's hands and take their gift. No, you've already given us everything that we need in order to fulfill the destiny which you called us to already. So Holy Spirit, would you already waken that within our hearts and our spirits this morning? So I got a three-point sermon for you. I don't often preach three-point sermons, and they're all S's. Just to make it really easy for you. So we're going to look at the staff. I'm afraid this is the best I could do. I looked and I pondered and I had a look on the internet and stuff and I was trying to get somebody to make a little bit of a hook that would go on this. But as I looked into it, sometimes the staff was just a stick or sometimes had a little hook on there to pull the sheet back into place. Then we're going to look at stones. So we went out for a walk yesterday and took Helen out to her. I took the dog out for a walk and Helen came with me yesterday and um, we just looked for stones. That came out the wrong way, didn't it? I'm making my own lunch, aren't I? Um, and so we just began to look at stones, and uh, again I want to unpack that a little bit, and then a sling. So I couldn't get the original, and so we, I just got one off the internet to look, it's probably nothing like this. And uh, we had a go this morning, we were going to get Daniel to uh, set it up and see how accurate he was. And so he put his guitar case here, he put his bottle of water there, and we put a polo mint into it to see how accurate he was. And he fired it from there, and the polo mint was smithering all over the stage. So he had to get Henry out to pick all of it up. But I want to unpack some of this stuff because it's very significant. Because we looked a few weeks ago, he tried on Saul's armor. And that's what you'd normally use to go to a battle, wouldn't you? You'd have the armor on, you'd have a breastplate on to protect your chest, you'd have a helmet on to protect your head, you'd, you'd have a shield, you'd have a spear, you'd have a sword. That's the natural thing that you would have in those days to go to battle. But look, look what day it was taken. It doesn't seem right, it doesn't seem fair that what God had placed in his hands was going to come up against something that the enemy had and all his power and his experience and the warrior that, that he was. So let's look at the first one. The staff, it probably looked more like that than the kind of brush shaft that I have this morning. But, um, but it, it doesn't look very much, does it? But in those days, it was, it was really important for the shepherd to have a staff. There's nothing special about it. It's just an everyday tool that they, that they would have used. It would have helped on, on 
on some, some rocky hills, maybe to, maybe to put in to help them pull up a little bit on those rocky hills and where the sheep were. It might have been used as a weapon just to, to defend some animals from coming around from stealing the sheep. It might have been used at that. Or the hook on the end of it might have been used to pull the sheep from, from danger and to protect them in some way. And as I began to think about this, well, as a shepherd, you'd normally have one of those. In the Tiffany play that the kids do every year, you see the shepherds, you see the tea towels around the head, all the different colours, and then you might have somebody who have a little staff made out of tin foil or something, a little hook on the end. It was just something, a natural tool that a shepherd would have owned. And I thought about this, David would have had one of these, and he would have been in the sheep field. But his father had sent them with some food to his brothers. So why on earth would he take his staff with him when he wasn't looking after the sheep? Anybody got an answer? Because I don't have an answer to that question. But it made me think a little bit. Why would he take a staff with him? Maybe it was just to help him aid him. Maybe walking down. I don't know what the hills were like, what the plains were like for him to get to where his brother. But he's taken this, 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 this weapon, this tool that he used as a shepherd with him to see his brothers to take some food. But he's not caring for the sheep, so, so why take his staff with him? And I began to think about this because David knew who the real shepherd was. Maybe it was a reminder to him of who the real shepherd was. Maybe this, what was in his hand was a reminder of his great shepherd. Maybe it was as he walked and pondered, and I don't know how long the journey was from where he was to take food to his brothers, but maybe as he pondered and he went along, because in the fields he had an amazing relationship with God already. And you can tell that through the, through the bear and through the lion and through some of the stuff that he pens in the Psalms. And he's walking now and he's taking his stuff with him. Maybe David's personal walk with God enabled him to walk towards the giant without fear. We have nothing to fear, church, if God is on our side. Doesn't matter how big the giant is. Doesn't matter how big the bill is. Doesn't matter how big the problem is or the difficulty is. Our God is always bigger. Yeah. Amen. And we see the end of verse 40 here. And we'll see in a few weeks' time that, you know, he approached the Philistine. But we see really on the verses later, he runs towards the Philistine. There was no fear in him whatsoever because he knew who his God was and he knew who his great shepherd was. And I find it very interesting because David's relationship... Go with me to Psalm 23. You're looking at me like you, like you don't believe me. In Psalm 23, we, we have this, this great psalm, don't we? We all know it really, really well. Well, who pounded the psalm? Who pounded the psalm? Who penned the psalm? Who wrote the psalm? Was it not David? Was it not the shepherd boy? Was it not the one who's going to war with the Philistine with a staff in his hand? And he pens these words, the Lord is my... There was a relationship that David had with God himself that I long for. And I hope you long for. I want a deeper relationship with God today than I had yesterday. There was a deep relationship that David had that he's able, able to pen these words, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet, water, quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. There's no fear in David going towards Goliath. There's no fear whatsoever. He says, because you are with me, your rod and your staff, which is better than what I'm carrying, your rod and your staff we talked about authority and power and protection. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And here's what the shepherd does also. He prepares a, a, a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Something in David knew that as he approached Goliath, God, it was going to be okay. It was going to be a-okay. It was going to be fine because he has the great shepherd. And you anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. The goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That relationship 
that he was able to pen them. You don't pen words like that unless you've got a relationship with a great shepherd. Talking about the depth of relationship, we mentioned this morning in 1 Corinthians 13 about the action love of God, that God's love is patient and kind and it never fails. The action love of God because love is an action word. For God so loved the world that he said he loved us. Is that what it says? For God so loved the world that he gave. It's an action word. He gave Jesus because he loved us so much. Because love is an action word. And again in 1 Corinthians 13 it's an action. God's love never fails. And here this incredible description that David has. A relationship that he has with his father God who is his great shepherd. And then I thought, I thought a little bit more about what, what else, because I'm sure there's another verse of Scripture about what's in your hands. And there's a verse of Scripture in, um, in Exodus 4, verse 2, when, when God said to Moses, what's in your hand? Do you remember that verse of Scripture? Second book of the Bible. He just says, and Moses replied, a staff. Now, we know that becomes a symbol of Moses, don't we? Because he strikes the rock with it. We know that he lifts it up and, and the Red Sea separates. There's a relationship already. But Moses is not a shepherd. But again, there's something here. There's, there's, there's something, whatever you've got in your hands, God will use. Moses is not a shepherd, but God uses what's in his hand. So again, I want you to think about what's already God placed in your hands that's not being used right now because God wants to use it. I find it interesting that David walks towards Goliath. It's basically a stick, isn't it? And Goliath has got... Probably one of the biggest swords you'll ever see. Because this guy's nine foot six. He's not going to have a little tiny sword like this. He's going to have a great big sword that maybe if David even struggled, maybe even to lift it up. I find it strange that he's going with a piece of stick, piece of wood against the sword of Goliath. But I'm wondering in, 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 in all of this, there's a greater victory to behold because the staff of God is greater than the sword of the enemy. Think about it. The staff of God is greater than the sword of the enemy. The Psalm 23, not to say that, but your rod and your staff, they comfort me, they protect me, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. The staff of God is greater, is greater than the sword of the enemy. Then I began to look at some stones. And I've read lots of theologians on this, choosing five stones, well, why five? You've probably heard preachers say before, well, because Goliath had four brothers. I'm not sure the scripture reads into that much more than, than that. But, but, but why, why, why five? Why five? Well, five symbolizes God's grace. It talks of his goodness and his favor towards us. Five is the, there were five primary types of offering God commanded Israel to bring to him. The Psalms are set out in five major sections. The five books of the law or the Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. So five was a, was a symbol word and is a symbol word in the Bible. So he chooses five stones. Or maybe it was just because it was habit. Because David was very good with a slingshot. Maybe it's because he just picked up, instead of picking up one, when he was protecting the sheep, that if he only had one and he missed, what does he do next? Maybe he was having or picking up a bunch of stones just to have them ready, just to fire, to protect his sheep that he's looking after. Some commentators have even said this, that some of the stones would have been the size of a baseball. And we were walking yesterday and picking up all these stones and my hands getting all dirty and stuff and, and picking up these stones and thinking, if that hit you, that might hurt. You know, that's not the size of a baseball, but you know, this that would hurt if it hit you in the head. If that dropped in your toe, we'd scream, wouldn't we? But when you think of the size of the stone, and, he, and God says, well, you know, there was something in him to choose five of these stones, and he chooses five of these stones. I'm not sure what size they are, but it was big enough to get the job done. Because God knew what he was doing. And then I read into it a little bit more. Maybe I just dig a little bit more. Why smooth stones? 
Why, why did the stones have to be smooth? Surely someone with a, with a more jagged edge might, might give a little bit more pain. It might dig a little bit deeper when it hits them in the head. I'm so glad the kids are upstairs this morning. You know, maybe they would do a little bit more damage if that was to hit you and have a little bit of sharpness. But actually, it needed to be smooth because when it's being fired from a slingshot, you become much more accurate. And then the smooth stones, and so he chooses five smooth stones so it would be much more accurate when they're released from the sling. And they're thinking, well, I understand that, but how do stones become smooth? He chose them from a river. And as the river runs, what it does over time, whether it's months, but probably years, over years, it just smooths the stone. And I thought about this in a spiritual sense. Maybe church, for God to knock our edges off, we just got to stay in the river of God. <clears throat> Maybe we just got to spend a little bit more in His presence in order to get some of the some of the edges knocked off on us, so we can be ready and prepared as soon as God says it's time to, to step out into everything that I've got for you. You're now in a place of preparation. And, and, and Again, I was talking to Helen this week, going for a walk. It's amazing what you talk about when you go for a walk, isn't it? And thinking about how long did those stones have to be in the river for them to become smooth? That God, years before, were even preparing the stones for David. I don't know about you, but that, that does my little head in. That God would even, you know, years before, would have stones prepared in the river in order to have the chosen smooth ones in order to fire them against Goliath. I think it's incredible that the plans and the purposes of God. Maybe the purpose here for the smooth stones for, smooth stones for us to, this morning, church, is just to stay in His presence. Just to stay in the presence of God. Stay in the river of God that He would make us ready for it any time He calls us to move in to what He's got for us. Then I began to look at the sling. And it was probably more like this than the one I've got up here. It was the two bits of string with a bit of leather on. You need to be pretty accurate with that, wouldn't you? Yeah. You need to be pretty good with that. Because when Daniel was standing there, the bottle of water was here, and he missed. Didn't you? Right. Come on. <laughs> I mean, you're only... I mean, I know that's two metres to the line, because we're all COVID-friendly. So that's two metres, three... So you're not even talking four metres, mate. Yeah, I was going to give you my glass. You just, you just, you just totally missed. I mean, the bottle was, was like this size, this size wasn't it? The bottle. <laughs> totally missed. Totally missed. So you've got this, 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 this sling that's made up with two bits of string and a piece of leather. And the leather would probably strap around the, the, uh, the wrist in order to keep it there and to keep it a little bit stronger. This was not a kid's toy. You know, when you pick this up, you're thinking, you know, I don't know you, but the little boy in me comes out and thinking, what's in my back garden I can play with? Anybody else? Tell me exactly the same. Or you go for a walk up the mountain, can I take this with me? It's probably been taken off me because it's a weapon. But you're thinking, what can you hit with this? You want to have a go at it, don't you? So anybody else, boys? Anybody like this? Yeah. Some of the girls want it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so it, it wasn't a... It wasn't a toy. It was an offensive weapon. It was a weapon that they used in war. And you're thinking, Phil, come on. They would use swords. They would use spears. They would use shields. They would have tactics and all sorts of stuff. But I came across a really interesting verse. In Judges um, 20 and verse 16, it says this. And they were going to war. The Israelites were going to war. Among all of these 700 men chosen who were left-handed, everyone could sling a stone at a hair and not miss. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know it was in the Bible. Anybody else? I, I, did you know it was in the Bible? And, and I'm just thinking, well, how accurate do you need to be with a slingshot to hit a hair? He can't hit a bottle with a pull him in. It's all right, eats all my food. It's fine. <laughs> And yet, the accuracy of 700 left-handed men to hit a hair. Now, I'm going to get you to pull a hair out of your head because some of you have got, okay. <laughs> so how about a hair, to hit a hair with a stone. I'm talking about a hairy head, not a rabbit kind of thing. 
to take a hair and to hit it and be that accurate, 700 of them, you can see why it became an offensive weapon. You can see why they used it in war. And God had prepared David in the field with a slingshot and with a stone and with a staff in order to prepare him to take down a giant who's, who's firing accusations against God and God's people. And I thought about this a little bit more. This is what David... Okay, Daniel, your turn. Come on, mate. We tried this on last night at my house. Come on. I do apologize for his legs. <laughs> right, you know how this goes on, don't you? Yeah, faith made that, so I'm not sure that's actually going to work. Somehow put that away. Now, he had a little shepherd's bag, so I don't know what they kept in there. He kept their sandwiches in there. I don't know what they kept in there. But he has this shepherd bag. <laughs> so if you want to put your stones in it, there's one over there. And you did hoover up the pool of it, didn't you? Most of it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so as I thought about this a little bit more, if David had have gone with his staff, if David had have gone with his staff, one to one, with the giant with the sword, he's no chance. Because as he lifts his staff, you're like a teacher now. <laughs> as, as he lifts his staff, and Goliath lifts his sword, his staff is going to be cut in half. Because this is wood. And that sword would have been really, really sharp. So, there you go. Hold your slingshot as well. And if anybody want to take a picture, you can take a picture now. This is that. If you want to do that, put it all over Facebook. If you want to do that, how much do you charge for a picture? I don't know you charge for it. Oh, we can. Tenor? 50, Tenor. 50 each? Yeah. Okay, so we'll split this 50 50. A tenor for a picture of a likeable David. <laughs> okay. First 42, it says handsome and healthy. Okay, just leave it there. Leave it there now. You're, you're stretching the text a little bit there, mate. Okay, I lost what I was doing now. So the advantage of having a slingshot, remember that Judges 20, verse 16, they can hit the hair, you know, that accurate with it. If David had a come with his staff, against the sword, a one-to-one -one combat with a nine-foot-six giant, he'd have lost. Possibly. God might have worked another plan. But the advantage and the wisdom of a slingshot meant that he could fight the giant from a distance. So he takes the five smooth stones, he takes his slingshot, and he gets to the place where he can bring down the giant without getting close. wisdom of God. It's the wisdom of God. I don't know about you, but what we've given already, if you were to take your Bible, that's the most powerful weapon that you can hold in your hand. And we can take down principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places without getting close to them. And we can tell the devil to flee through the power of the Spirit of God that lives within us without getting close to him. You don't have to get close to the enemy to defeat him. He's already been defeated. And so he takes his slingshot and he's able to, with, with, with the accuracy and the gift and the talent that God had already placed within his hand, that he can defeat Goliath from a distance. You see, okay, you can put all that stuff down now. Thank you very much. You could get a little bit bored there. Give him a round of applause, please. Just walk around there you don't can't walk, just, just walk around there. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> Listen church, you don't need to have the same weapons as the enemy to defeat the enemy. David's weapons are completely different than Goliath's. If you and I had a choice this morning, if I had Goliath's armory here, and we had David's armory here, and I brought two people up to have a pretend fight and to work out, most people would go for this weaponry. We'd go for the shield, we'd go for the, uh, we'd go for the protection around the heart, we'd go for the helmet, we'd go for the spear, we'd go for the, we'd go for the sword, we'd go for that because it's, it's stronger, it's sharper. Well, well, who would go with a stick and who would go with some stones and a, and a piece of string with a bit of leather on it? We wouldn't naturally go to that stuff, but what God had already placed in David's hands was more powerful than what the enemy was holding in his. And so the weapons God has given us is greater. 
Ephesians 6. Belt of, breastplate of, helmet of, feet the gospel of peace. Then you've got the shield of faith and you've got the... That's the weapons that God has given us and it's greater than anything the enemy holds. If you were to take your Bible in your hand this morning and lift it up, it's the most powerful weapon that you will ever hold in your hands. It's greater than any weapons that man can make, any, any diseases that's out there. It's greater because it's the sword of the Spirit. Amen. Again, I say, the weapons of the shepherd are greater than the weapons of the warrior of the enemy. And as I just bring this to an end, Psalm 20 verse 7 says this, Some may trust in horses and chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. David did not walk into this battle without knowing his God. Sometimes church, in our relationship with God, we walk into stuff without talking to God about it. Sometimes we walk into it and make decisions without consulting the all-wise one. David, in his relationship with God, knowing who his great shepherd was, had years of preparation in the field. Don't think he just turned up one day. He was sent by his father in order to walk to beat a giant. There was years of preparation. Some of you have maybe been in the river for a little while now, and some of the edges have been knocked off, and maybe it's a season now to step into everything that God has for you. Maybe it's time to, to shake off some of this stuff and shake off some of that stuff that we mentioned during our worship. Shake off some of that failure that you've maybe attached to you. Shake, shake off some of the negativity and some of the stuff that man has spoken over you because you've been in the river and the presence of God is changing you and transforming you into the likeness of Jesus. Maybe it's time to stand up with what God has placed in your hand and fulfill the destiny that God has called you to do. David was not prepared to take somebody else's weapons he was using already what was in the hands that God had given him. The things he had been trained in. This is why it's so great when you have somebody who's trained to be a teacher look after our children. It's a natural gift. It's why it's so good when you've got musicians who have gone through training and stuff and have done whatever they've done and they get to that place in the spirit. It's that, that, that's it. That's what it's all about. And even in your natural jobs, there's stuff that can be used in church. So what's in your hands, church? What has God equipped you? What has God enabled you to do? And no matter what you're facing, church, no matter what's ahead of you, they can't be defeated. It can't be defeated. It's just with what God has given you already. And you may think it's something really simple. You may think, well, God, you've just put this in my hands or this. And it doesn't seem really great and it doesn't seem really powerful, whatever. But what God has placed in your hand it has a plan and it has a purpose. David never, never imagined that he was a shepherd boy that one day was going to face the warrior, the giant, at nine foot six with all his armor on and face him with a sling. You see, there's nothing today that you and God can handle. Nothing. So I wonder this morning, what has God placed in your hands? Is there anything that you're aware of that God has placed? And I'm sure if I had time this morning, I could come down to you individually and say, I believe God has done this, God has placed this in your hands. What's your natural gifts? Sometimes we're always looking for the super spiritual stuff. Sometimes just your natural gifts, which are God-given anyway, that God wants to take, that God wants to use. Let's just bow our heads for a moment. Let's just close our eyes. Thank you for listening. I invite the music team just to come back. What has God placed in your hands? What is it? I just pray, Holy Spirit, right now that you just bring some stuff to the surface right now that you've placed in their hands that maybe they're unaware of gifts and talents, things that maybe you've trained them in, maybe things God you've trained them in even in the workplace that can be used for your glory. Or maybe what you're facing this morning just seems far too great. 
And you think, well, God, you've not given me the ability to deal with that. Well, yes, he has. You already have everything. You just got to learn how to pull on it. How to resource it. Maybe just move yourself this morning. Why don't you just put your hands out before you? Let me pray over them. Father, we thank you for our gifts and our talents, both natural and spiritual. And Father, I know that you want to take them and you want to use them. And there may be some place, some people in this place this morning, or some people listening online that are not using everything that you've equipped them with right now. God, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just shake them. I pray, Holy Spirit, you would just talk to them right now. Just nudge them and encourage them to say, hey, listen, I've given you this for a reason and for a purpose. You need to use this in the kingdom of God. You've got to use this in your church. You've got to use this in your workplace. You've got to use this in the street in which you live, your neighbors. Some of you this morning might feel a little bit inferior because you feel that what God has given you is not much. But you need to understand that God's only given you the faith the size of a mustard seed. Well, there's big mountains that can be moved with those. It's not the size of what God has given you, it's what God has given you. Because he's the God that has taken five loaves and two fish to feed thousands of people. He's the God that can take a shepherd boy with a sling and some stones and a staff and take him to battle with a giant. And as we know the story, he defeats the giant. And so whatever you're facing this morning, you already have enough that God has given you. And my prayer is this morning, those gifts, those talents that God has given you, that you're not yet using them. And you think you can use them in church, then please come and speak to me. But what is it you're facing this morning? What is it that seems too big? What is it that you feel that you're unequipped for? And I pray, Holy Spirit, you would just begin to minister. Just let the gentleness and the power of the Holy Spirit just minister over you right now.
some of you need to go and just sit in his presence a little longer each day. Father, as my voice becomes sounding, God, I pray that what you have placed in our hands, and I think of those, those 700 left-handed men in Judges 20, were extremely accurate with the gift that you've given them. God, I pray that, Father, you'd make us accurate with the gifts and talents you've given us. Make us the very best. Not for pride's sake, but for your glory. If, Father, what you've given us, Father, we do our very best. We give it our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Everything into the gifts and talents that you've given us, God. We're not just leaving to the side and pick them up now and again. But, Father, we use what you've given us. Let me just do one other thing just before we finish. And I was just thinking about this earlier. Can you take your Bible in your hand? Or what you represent as your Bible, maybe it's your iPad at the moment. Just place it in your hand this morning. I hope and I pray you love this book. I thought I would have got one amen then. I hope and I pray you love this book. Amen. The sword of the Spirit. God, I pray that you would make us accurate with these words. I've said it before, God, but we want to be spiritual musketeers. We want to be very good with the sword of the Spirit. We want to know when to use it in the heavenlies. We want to know when to use it on earth here, God, to encourage and build up. We want to know how to use it, Father, to help people, to lead them from darkness into light, to help us, God, to be salt and light in a world that's saltless and dark. Father, you would help us to be extremely accurate with the sword of the Spirit. Father, we will not just leave it from week to week and bring it on a Sunday, but God, we would delve deep into this Word, God. That we would know it not just from the pages, but Father, the Word would be written in our hearts and in our minds and in our spirits, God. But Father, we would truly know who the Good Shepherd is, not by reading about Him, but because of the relationship we have with the Good Shepherd. Father, bring a fresh revelation of the most powerful weapon that we're holding in our hands right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you uh, for listening. And we're going to finish with a song. Um, don't forget there's some forms out there, membership forms, water baptism forms. Sign up for the well-being course if you can. If you're part of our children's team, you volunteer, you help in some way, there is a meeting uh, up there after the service this morning. Faith just wants to go through a few things uh, with you guys, so don't forget that that meeting is on. There is some tea and coffee. And is there, where's David? Is there biscuits? I think there's three biscuits. First three there. <laughs> Sorry, I got one prayer request. Let's pass that to me. Sorry, I got one prayer request. Let me just, let's just bow our heads for a moment. Prayer request by a gentleman called Paul Parker. Some operation on his foot and uh, some complications, and also has some ulcers. He's in hospital and needs prayer. And uh, maybe this morning you need some prayer. Then where you are, just place your hand over your heart and just let me pray. Maybe there's somebody that's on your heart this morning who needs a touch of healing. Well, we're coming to Jehovah Rapha this morning. He's God our healer. Why don't we just begin to lift your voice we are just for a few moments there, just before I pray. We lift those precious people up before God now. Bring that family member, that friend, that work colleague. <coughs> just bring them before God right now. If it's you that needs prayer, then you pray. He's your shepherd. Ask him to come and touch and heal you right now in Jesus' name. Father, we bring this gentleman, Paul Parker, to you right now in Jesus' name. Father, he's had an operation on his foot. We thank you for medicine, doctors, physicians. Uh, Lord, we thank you for all our medical staff and the amazing job that they do. And Father, we pray right now that you would protect them. We, Lord, we pray that this is successful. We pray that there's no complications whatsoever. God, we pray a blessing and anointing, Father, over the surgeons, over the staff, over the nurses, over those people who help them in recovery. Father, we pray that the process of recovery is even quicker than what they said. 
that, Father, you would bring this recovery really quickly. Father, over his ulcers right now, God, we pray right now, would you just dissolve them? Would you, would you squash them up, God? Would you just heal them up? Would you get rid of them right now? In Jesus' name, Father, all for your glory and all for your honor. I don't know if this gentleman knows God or not, but God, we do pray if he doesn't. God, we pray that you would save him. God, if he does know you, we pray that, God, he would give an amazing testament to the grace and the love of his God, Father, of his healing process that's taking place. Father, for people in this place this morning, people listening at home and online, God, we pray if they need to touch your healing, Father. Your word says that you sent forth your word and you touched and you healed and restored in Jesus' name. And I pray, God, miracle after miracle after miracle will take place right now. The pain would just be released right now. Joint pain would go. Eye pain would go. Migraines would go. Back pain would go. Problems in the feet would just go right now in Jesus' name. Come on, name it out before God. If you've got a condition, speak it out before Him. Tell Him, God, would you touch Him? Would you heal Him? Would you restore my body to full health right now? The way you quit it in the beginning. The way you quit it in the beginning without any pain and discomfort. We pray right now in Jesus' name. For those that are on our list, God, we continue to pray and lift up before God this morning. The Father, we want to hear the testimonies. We want to hear the testimonies of your love and your grace and your healing power. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, let's stand. Let's finish with a song that's blessed God as he has blessed us. Uh, when you're leaving, there will be a basket out there. If you wish to give your tithes, gifts and offerings, please do. Uh, if you can help us by giving online, all the details are on our website to help us uh, with that, then and please do also. Uh, your, your, your gifts, your talents, we mentioned when I was sharing this morning. If you have some natural gifts and spiritual gifts that are not um, you're using in the church right now, then please do come and speak to me. Drop me an email, your phone call, whatever, and uh, we'll see if we can help with those things and uh, get you involved in some way. God is good. Amen. Come on, let's worship God.
too late that the sermon's been done. Okay, parents, you just need to pick your children up, please. I know it's a new um, way that we're doing it, so if you can just go get the children, send children out. And then if you're part of the team, there's going to be a meeting up there. I'm just going to finish the pray and have tea and coffee and have an amazing week. See you soon. God bless you. Oh. Heavenly Father, just thank you for this morning. Thank you for the word that's given by Phil. And we just thank you that uh, we've got a new life upstairs and new expectations and things for the children, Lord. And we just, uh, yeah, thank you for today. We pray for the rest of our weeks that we'd uh, be blessed by you and uh, we'd be able to feel your presence in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.